Welcome everybody to the seasonal diet, eating what our ancestors ate, when they ate it, like we were evolved to do. Nettle, one of my absolute, absolute favorites. I grew up hating the stuff, running around in the forest in Norway naked as a kid. Okay, maybe even sometimes as an adult. <laughs> you brush up on this stuff and it brings itches and painful rashes on my ass. But it actually is one of the most beneficial herbs we have in our nature in the north of Europe. First of all, it has a lot of nutrients and amino acids and antioxidants, things like that. And there is some studies about it healing with inflammation, allergies, prostate problems, blood pressure, blood sugar. Again, these things are never proven and recognized 100% uh, by science because they don't want to spend millions of dollars on studies that are not going to make the pharmaceutical industry money. So I can't speak about the proven benefits and, you know, there are not going to be any proven benefits that are going to come out anytime soon. I only speak about the history here as always. So nettle is originally uh, native to uh, northern Europe, um, but it grows a little bit of everywhere, uh, all over where the European settlers brought it to, and it has been historically used in tea and even food. And if you harvest it early enough, uh, or if you boil it well, the actual stinging little needles uh, fall off and you can eat it. It's like spinach, but you have to be careful because that can damage the kidneys and insides if not prepared uh, correctly, so you have to be very careful there. It's also been used in the north of Europe for making soups, uh, cheese, and beer. In the south of Europe, uh, we see more of a tradition of it being used for pastries and desserts, those types of things. The stems of the nettle plant uh, also can be made into textiles and clothing. Uh, 3,000 years ago, um, we found uh, ancient uh, textiles from the Bronze Age um, in Denmark, so it could be made into clothes. Nettle is also one of the sacred ingredients used in the Anglo-Saxon Nine Herbs Charm, where Odin is invoked over a herbal remedy uh, to uh, heal a snake bite. I thought you guys would like that one there. So that is only a few of the uh, historical uses for this wonderful plant. You can see how important this plant was in so many ways um, and in all aspects of human life in the olden times. Do most people today even know what it is? No, they don't. Is it in any of our foods or our modern diet? Nope, not that either. So you can see why our health uh, today is in the shitter with all of the great plants that gave us a balanced diet before in time and they're damn near lost today, even when it's actually growing close to a lot of you and very easily accessible. I have it pretty regularly and year-round. I like it in tea, but you can also find it in pill form in most health food stores. But yeah, I love the plant so much, I wish I could take it in all the ways that were mentioned in beers and soups and pastries, eat it like spinach. Uh, and it is actually in season for quite a long time, from May until October, so our ancestors would have been able to eat it fresh then. Uh, but you can also dry it and preserve it to be eaten year-round, as our ancestors would have also done. But yeah, ask your doctor or nutritionist and definitely if you're going to go harvest it wild uh, have an expert help you uh, catch it and also prepare it because like I said it can have some bad effects if done incorrectly.